Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Next we're going to look at the tools that we use to modify the clip art we've inserted. We have two main tools that we use to make modifications to our pictures. The first is the picture toolbar and when you click on a clip to select it you should see the picture toolbar appear by default. If not, you may right click on the clip and then choose the show picture toolbar command in order to force it to appear. You can tell when a clip is selected because it will have a border around it. If you click off of it, the picture toolbar disappears and so does the border. Click on it again and they'll both reappear. Now when you first insert clip art into a document, it appears with a thick black border around it and black resizing handles. This indicates the type of layout that the actual clip has, and this layout is called inline with text. Right now, it's acting as if it's just another character in a sentence. This is not particularly conducive to most documents, as you cannot move the clip, you have to actually cut and paste it like it's a word, and you're also having issues with resizing. Other things like applying picture borders would not be possible in this mode either. And unfortunately, they make this the default. So almost always, the first thing we do when we insert a picture is select the picture and use the layout button or text wrapping button to choose something other than in line with text, like square for example. This then allows us to move and resize our images. To move an image, once you've changed the layout, you simply click in the middle of it and drag it around. If you'd like to resize an image, you may click it to select it, place your mouse pointer over one of the resizing handles that run around the perimeter, and click and drag in or out to expand or shrink the image. Now let's take a look at some of the functionality that's available on the picture toolbar. The first button, insert picture, will bring up the insert picture from the file dialog box, which is used to insert our own graphics that we've saved to our computer system. The second button, which is called image control, when you give it a click, displays a drop-down choice of four settings for your graphic. These are automatic, grayscale, black and white, or washout. It's called watermark in the previous versions. Automatic is the default choice. This shows the graphic with its original colors. Choosing grayscale shows the picture in a more realistic black and white version that uses shades of gray. You might choose this option if you were going to print it to a black and white printer. Choosing pure black and white, or just the black and white, simply uses black and white. There's no gray. Choosing washout or watermark, depending on your version, turns the image into a watermark, so it fades it. You could then set it as the background of the paper and then type text over it. Watermark or washout mutes the original graphics colors, so there's an interesting trick with that command. Notice that if you chose automatic for a color image, and then chose washout or watermark, you get a color watermark. However, if before choosing washout you chose grayscale or black and white, and then chose washout, you get a black and white watermark. In order to set it back to its original colors, simply choose automatic. You can change the contrast in the picture by clicking repeatedly the increase contrast or more contrast to increase the contrast in the image or you could click the less contrast which increases the amount of gray in the image. You may also click the more brightness and less brightness button to increase the amount of white in the image or decrease the amount of white.
If you click the Crop button, this will turn your mouse pointer into a cropping tool. To use it, click and drag on any one of the cropping borders that appear around the image. If you drag inward, you crop the image away. However, notice that if you drag too far, you can drag outward again to restore the image. And when you're finished, click the Crop button again to turn that function off. In the 2003 and XP versions, you may also select a graphic and click Rotate Left 90 degrees to rotate the picture to the left 90 degrees each time that you click it. This was not available on this toolbar in Word 2097, but the function was available. You can click the Line Style button to view a drop-down menu of line widths that you may select as a border for your graphic. Note that if you did not change the text wrapping from the inline with text, then you will not be able to apply a line border. You cannot apply borders to graphics that have an inline with text text wrapping style. In 2003 and XP, you can also click the Compress Pictures button to select whether or not to compress one or more images in your document. This is typically only done for graphics intended for web page display as smaller graphic files tend to download faster. It will not work with clip art, just bitmap based photographs like JPEG or GIF files. In the Compress Pictures dialog box, you select whether to compress all pictures in document or just the selected picture. Also, should it change the resolution to web screen, which is 96 dots per inch, a lower resolution, print, 200 dots per inch, or you could say no change to the resolution. Then should it compress the pictures, which is used to change resolution, or should it simply delete the cropped areas of pictures? Before, if you applied the cropping tool, you didn't actually ever delete the picture that was being uh, cropped away. It was always there, and so the files could be quite large if you had a bunch of cropped images. Here we can actually permanently delete the cropped areas of the pictures, so that you will no longer be able to restore them, but you also get smaller files. When you've made your selection, click OK, and then just click Apply. So at this point, note that we would not be able to uncrop and restore the image of the flower. If you click the text wrapping button, which actually looks like a yellow diamond in 97, it displays a drop down menu of choices for text wrapping of the clip. The choices are in line with text, square, tight, behind text, in front of text, top and bottom, or through. When you first insert a picture into Word 2003 XP or 2000, the graphic inserts with the inline with text option. Select an alternative wrapping style immediately because this prevents both your ability to click and drag the picture to move it and the ability to apply borders to your objects. You may click the Format Picture button to bring up the Format Picture dialog box. You can control all of the aspects of your graphic from this dialog box as well as from the Picture toolbar. As a matter of fact, you can see that many of these settings are the same settings we have on the Picture toolbar. You can, if you have a bitmap based image, like a photograph, choose the Set Transparent Color button. Notice that that is not available for clip art or cartoon-like drawings. What this does is when clicked, it allows you to place your mouse pointer over a color you would like to eradicate in your image and click once to knock that color out from the image, making it semi-transparent. The final button, and the one you certainly might use at least at first, is Reset Picture. This is the graphic equivalent of the Undo button. It restores the graphic back to the way it originally looked when you inserted it into the document. So if you mangle an image, you do not have to click on it 
and press delete on your keyboard to get rid of it and then reinsert it. Instead, you may just simply click it and then click reset picture, which restores the image. Notice, however, it will not restore cropped areas that were then compressed using the compressed pictures dialog. And that's it for the buttons on your picture toolbar. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.